Let us now talk about properties of capacitance. Capacitance is always positive. It depends only on the shape and material of the capacitor. The SI unit of one farad corresponds to very large capacitance. Many typical capacitors used in common applications have capacitance that is only a small fraction of one farad. Capacitors come in many kinds and sizes. Their typical capacitance ranges from a few picofarads to a few farads. The touchscreen of a handheld electronic device, such as an iPhone, is in fact a very sophisticated array of mini capacitors that determine the X and Y position of each finger touch by measuring mutual capacitance or self-capacitance of each uh, mini capacitor. We will now watch what happens inside a capacitor when we charge or discharge it. We will focus on the simplest capacitor, which is called a parallel plate capacitor. It is formed by two flat sheets of conductive material with area A separated by small distance D. Typically, dielectric will be inserted between the plates to increase the capacitance of such capacitor. Uncharged capacitor has no charge of its own, so there is no charge in the capacitor to start with. We charge capacitor by connecting each plate to a terminal of a battery. The battery is a source of potential difference. It moves the charges from one plate to the other. The electromotive force in the battery thus separates the charge plus Q on one plate from the charge minus Q on the other plate. Let us now investigate properties of this capacitor in more detail. The simplest thing I can do is to measure the potential difference. I can take my voltmeter and connect two terminals of the voltmeter to the plates. I see there is some potential difference between the plates that varies as the charge changes. The more charge I have on the plates, the larger the potential difference is. Let us see the uh, indicator of the charge explicitly. So when I test change the charge, the charge goes up and down, and consequently the voltage goes up and down as well. If I ask what the capacitance is, let us see how the capacitance changes as a function of charge. So I vary the, cap uh, the charge and I vary the voltage. The capacitance stays more or less the same. In fact, we don't see any change at all. The only change, the only way I can change the capacitance is by changing dimensions of the plates. For instance, I can increase the area of the plates. The capacitance goes up, consequently, the charge for the same voltage goes up as well. I can also change the separation of the plates. If I put the plate closer, the capacitance goes up the charge goes up for the same potential difference across the plates. Finally, let's examine electric field around the capacitor. Let us explicitly show electric field lines. We see that in this case, all electric field is concentrated in between the plates. There is essentially no electric field outside of the plates. We can apply an approximation of an infinite charge sheet to find the electric field and capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor. We can also ask what happens we, when we insert some material be between the plates of the capacitor. For instance, let's take a piece of dielectric. Notice the charge distribution inside the dielectric. The positive and negative charge is distributed uniformly inside the dielectric, so the net charge in an average part of the dielectric is zero. Imagine we insert the dielectric between the plates. We see that the electric charge on the plates is much larger in the place in the part where dielectric is inserted. We also see that charges are separated inside the dielectric. Essentially, the energy of the battery is pumped into the capacitor and stored uh, by separating 
positive and negative charges inside the dielectric. As we insert the dielectric, we increase the capacitance of the capacitor. This is one way we can construct capacitance with uh, capacitors with very high capacitance by simply the inserted, inserting the electric material between the plates. Very often, we can construct a composite capacitor by connecting several capacitors in series on or in parallel. For example, here is a connection called connection in series. In this case, the positive terminal of capacitor C1 is connected to the positive terminal of the battery. The negative terminal of the capacitor C2 is connected to the negative terminal. And the positive uh, capacitor of the capacitor C2 is connected to the negative terminal of the capacitor C1. One of the questions in your warm up asked, how is the charge distributed between two capacitors uh, connected to a source of potential difference? The answer depends on the, on the type of the connection. For the connection in series, the uh, charge on the capacitor C1 will always be equal to the charge on the capacitor C2. Let's see why this happens. Suppose we charge the capacitors for the constant potential difference across them. So we start increasing the potential difference supplied by the battery. When we do that, the, the charge from the upper plate of the capacitor C1 is pumped to the lower plate of the capacitor C2, so that the sum of these two charges is, posit is uh, equal to zero. Similarly, the total charge on the inner plates of the capacitor C1 and C2 must add up to zero. So therefore, the charge on the upper plate of the capacitor C1 is negative and equal to the uh, in magnitude and opposite in, in, in sign to the charge on the upper plate of the capacitor C2. The other type of connection is called connection in parallel. In this case, the upper plates of both capacitors C1 and C2 are connected to the positive terminal of the battery, and the negative plates of capacitor C1 and C2 are connected to the negative terminal of the battery. When I increase the potential difference across the battery, I pump the positive charge both to the upper plate of C1 and upper plate of C2. The potential on the upper part of the circuit connected to the upper plates is the same. And similarly, the pot potential on the lower plates is also equal on both plates, uh, although, of course, it's different from the potential on the upper part of the circuit. So let us charge these capacitors. The capacitors have slightly different capacitances. When I increase the potential difference, there is more charge stored on the capacitor C2 that has larger capacitance than on the capacitor C1. So the charge distributes proportionally to the capacitances of these two capacitors.